I would note that there was an incorrect. Uh, you've all been given copies of the updated agreement. Uh, there were some changes that we had talked about that uh, were not included in that earlier version. You've since been given the uh, current one, which uh, the heading is Joint Operating Agreement for the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. So, as you can see from the descriptor in the agenda, uh, the City of Moscow and the City of Pullman have. Uh, along with some other partners, uh, partnered in the management of the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport for many years. The last agreement that is current is in 1971, uh, and signatory to that agreement are uh, the Port of Whitman, Latok County, University of Idaho, Washington State University, City of Moscow, and City of Pullman. Um, there have been several times over the past years that, and several, I mean three or four times, that updating that agreement has come forward. And uh, because there were so many players involved in the agreement, it always seemed that there was an issue with how you proceed. How does this happen? Uh, each body wanted to have it explained to them. And I don't know if it was because of inertia, change over the board, or whatever, but we never did, or the airport was never successful in getting that agreement updated. <coughs> So uh, since that time, we've been operating under the past agreement, as the council well knows, for many years when an FAA grant is offered to the airport, and the airport, by the way, is managed by an executive director, as you know. Uh, the mayor of Pullman serves as the chair of the board. The mayor of Moscow is the vice chair of the board. Uh, business is conducted through the city of Pullman. They utilize their finance staff uh, for their financials, so on and so forth. However, um, when the executive director would bring an FAA grant before the council, um, it was always the city of Moscow and the city of Pullman who had to uh, pass the grant authorization, uh, agree to the grant assurances, and the council would approve each of those grants. They would be signed, and typically what would happen is our mayor would sign it because our council meets on Monday nights. Then it would be transported uh, personally over to the city of Pullman, who would then approve it and sign it that evening because their council meetings are on Tuesday nights. Um, and that went along very well for many years. The city of Moscow's participation is in operating um, funds for the airport, uh, signing the grant assurance agreements, and we also have a small outstanding bond that began with uh, the construction of the air terminal building in, I believe it was the 80s. Well, as the council well knows, and you just had an FAA grant before you at two council meetings ago, or one council meeting ago, excuse me, for about $1.87 million for snow removal equipment, uh, runway and apron repair uh, at the airport. Um, and at that time, the FAA uh, informed us, as they have for the past two years, that the current agreement needs to be upgraded. Uh, the, the impetus behind that uh, upgrade or the revision of the agreement is because the airport is just about uh, to embark on a runway realignment project, which has been uh, discussed for many years, but very much so in the last five years. Uh, that is a many million dollars project, and it caused the FAA to review the agreement and make sure that the agreement itself meets the requirements of the grant assurances for these FAA grants. In doing that review, there were some issues that uh, the FAA brought up. The main issue was that uh, the sponsors of the grants, the City of Moscow and the City of Pullman, did not have sole appointing authority for the airport board. Um, their concern was if the airport board is not, the seats on that board are not controlled by those two sponsors. And essentially in the past it's been almost a pay to play type situation. Each of the folks who were signatory to the agreement would put some money into the operation of the airport. Uh, the FAA didn't like that situation, said that the sponsors needed to be control, in control of the appointments for that airport. So at that time we started negotiating the agreement. Um, about a year and a half ago now, trying to find some different organization uh, structure that the FAA would find uh, or could approve. Uh, what they indicated was that um, the city of Moscow needed to appoint the representatives from the Idaho side of the uh, agreement, and the city of Pullman needed to make the appointments for the Washington side of the agreement. Um, the airport board as it sits right now is an eight-person board. Uh, 
the Port of Whitman uh, contributes funding for support of the airport, but did not want to be included on the board. So there are four representatives from the Washington State side and four representatives from the Idaho State side. Meeting with the attorney from the city of Pullman, um, of course, Rod came on in August of last year. Uh, so when I was interim city attorney, we began negotiating this agreement, and we thought that we would uh, talk about a structure that um, <coughs> is common in a lot of places, and that is an odd number of board appointees. Um, but we wanted to make sure that there was equal legislative authority on each side of the, of the state line. So the proposal was to have the chair of the board, the mayor of Pullman, uh, appoint four members from the state of Washington. The mayor of Moscow would appoint three members from the state of Idaho, thereby creating a nine-person board. Uh, but to have the mayor of the city of Pullman not have a vote except to break a tie. Uh, we floated that. Both legislative bodies, the city of Moscow, city of Pullman, were comfortable with that. The FAA indicated that that was not um, acceptable to them. Since the city of Pullman was a sponsor, they wanted to make sure that we weren't divesting one of the sponsors from a vote. So that took us right back to having an eight-member board. Uh, so the mayor of Pullman will remain the chair and appoint three uh, additional members from the Washington side, one of whom, one who will be a representative of the president of Washington State University, one who will be a city resident at large, city of Pullman resident, and one who will be a resident of Whitman County who may represent the Port of Whitman. On the Idaho and the mayor of Pullman will have a vote. Uh, the mayor of the city of Moscow as the, as the vice chair would have a vote and would appoint um, a representative of the president of the University of Idaho, a uh, citizen of Moscow at large and a representative of Lata, excuse me, a resident of Lata County who may represent the Lata County commissioners. This gives essentially those folks who have a stake in the airport, uh, some say on the airport board, but the ultimate appointing authority is the city of Moscow and the city of Pullman. So the legislative structure that you see, the board structure that you see there is now been accepted by the FAA. That was a big thing to the FAA. And there are some technical things, and I know Rod's ready to talk about uh, some of the infrastructure issues. You'll also notice there is one other uh, section in there that uh, did not exist in the previous agreement, and that is the ability of the city of Moscow to request and the city of Pullman to grant uh, a common um, interest or co-tenancy, tenants in common, of an undivided one-half interest in the airport land and fixtures. Uh, the airport, as far as we know, is titled in uh, the name of the city of Pullman. The city of Moscow has never had a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, legal interest in the property, an ownership interest in the property. Uh, I know the council had some concerns about whether or not the, the city of Moscow wanted to uh, have an ownership interest in the property. So we structured the agreement so that should the city of Moscow city council decide that they want to become uh, owners of an undivided one-half interest in the land and the fixtures of the airport, all the council needs to do is to take a vote on the issue. Um, that action will be delivered to the city of Pullman, and they will then create that co-tenancy, and the city of Moscow will then become uh, owners of an undivided one-half one interest in the property of the airport. So with that, um, I know Walter had some discussions or wanted some uh, further clarification about uh, water and sewer services and that sort of thing on the airport. Uh, Rod has researched that, and he's able to answer any other questions. Suffice it to say in closing, before we get to that, that uh, this document now has been reviewed extensively by the airport's attorney, Kelly Brown, the executive director of the airport, Tony Bean, Laura McAloon, the Pullman City attorney, um, Mark Workman, Pullman City supervisor, myself, Rod, and has been reviewed by the FAA legal counsel. Uh, they've indicated that it does meet their need and will allow us to be uh, have the agreement in place and ready to proceed uh, with uh, authorization of a grant if it's the council's uh, choice to do so. Uh, participation in the air, uh, the uh, runway realignment project should that project come forward. Do you uh, do you want Rod to make the the comments? I think, or I, do you want I, I think I might be able to keep him from doing that if I can well, ask okay, you Walter. Quick. 
Um, <laughs> you know, I, I did talk to Rod today about a couple of things, and uh, I think I'm more or less comfortable with what I consider to be some peculiarly worded paragraphs in here that he has managed to explain to me. Um, one thing I would mention, Gary, I think you said land and fixtures twice. It's real property and fixtures. Yes. So it's not just the land. Exactly. In the city's opportunity, quote unquote, to own half of whatever it is they can identify out there as the real property. He's fixtures. talking about 2.2, yes. section 2.2. Section 2.2. And, and that we're not doing tonight. And if I may, um, what is the anticipated effective date, and when will the board be reconstituted if we pass this tonight, Gary? Um, that's an interesting discussion. My assumption would be if this is executed tonight and we made arrangements with Mayor Johnson and Mark Workman that it will be transported and they will consider it tomorrow night at their council meeting. Once that is done, uh, my suspicion is that Mayor Lambert and Mayor Johnson will be bringing uh, their appointments forward. I don't know if the, the airport board uh, will change personnel-wise, but it will definitely be reconstituted under this agreement. I will put oh, sorry, I will, immediately. Yes. I will put an answer to that, Walter. The next airport board meeting is uh, July 30th, which is coming up a week from Wednesday. So my guess is that will be one of the action items that will be on that agenda. Wayne. So we have an eight-member board. Yes. Each member has an equal vote. Yes. You know what the question is? Yes. Tie votes. What do you do? What will happen is in any parliamentary society, when there is a a tiebreaker, is always a great thing. Um, I think the U.S. Senate, um, legislatures, our city council are all set up right. You have someone to break the tie when that happens. Um, what happens in a parliamentary society is if you have a motion come forward, it garners four votes for, and there are four votes against, that motion dies for lack of a majority, um, thereby providing the opportunity for further negotiation or wearing the other side down. Um, it's just a little messier, but it's. I think, they, I think they used to have those even boards back in the days that duels were legal in the United States, <laughs> and since that time they've changed to odd numbers. So that then you wouldn't have an even number, and you have to get somebody else where you can vote again. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Just, other questions for Gary? John, did you have a question? I'm ready to make a motion. If you oh, anybody else further discussion. Unless, unless Rod has something new and different than what he's already told me, I don't need to hear any more. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> I would move that uh, we accept the joint operating agreement for the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport, and uh, we accept it as it is written, and that uh, the mayor signs it, and uh, the city clerk sign it, and we send it to the city of Pullman post haste. Second. Okay, John made a motion to approve that with Wayne second to allow for the joint operating agreement for the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. To give me permission to sign it, as well as our deputy clerk, uh, Stephanie Kalaz, and to move this forward to the city of Pullman. I will start the roll with John. Aye. 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 Okay, so that is accepted six to zero.